prayer. Today is the day of the Lord. Let's worship God because he has given us a gift of this day. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Brethren, today is Sunday. Let's shout a good amen. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Prayer for the nation. We have seen what is happening globally. There are storms raging in every nation in the world and here in our nation. The Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. As children of God, we want to raise up our voice because the Bible also says where two or three are gathered is there in their midst. We want to silence the storms globally. We want to silence the storms in our nation. Every power that has gripped our nation, every storm that has gripped our nation, every power that has gripped our nation, Let's set it free with our voices. Let's raise up our voice to God. We don't want to complain again. We don't want to lament again. We want to say enough is enough as children of God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, Furthermore, when I came to trials to preach, Christ's gospel and a door was opened unto me. Now we pray for the minister of God, the convener of the GCK, the general superintendent of the Deeper Life Bible Church, and say, as he goes ahead to every nation and every state, and as his ministration goes and streams to 150 countries, we we'll pray that the doors will be opened. I said, we pray that doors will be opened. Let's open up our voices and raise them unto God. Doors will be open to our GS, the convener of the Global Crusade. In Jesus' name we are prayed. The church of God will march ahead and the gate of hell will not prevail. I said the gate of hell will not prevail. We are going to pray that every mechanism of the evil, of the evil ones, of the demonic ones against the church of God. Politically, socially, against his church, let's pray their plans will be disannulled. Let's raise up our voice and tell God. The church of God will stand strong. The church of God will grow strong. The church of God will march on. The gates of hell will not prevail. Socially, it will not prevail. Spiritually, it will not prevail. Politically, it will not prevail. No man, no association, no conglomeration, no fellowship shall hinder the growth of the church of God. Let's raise up our voice and tell God, Nothing can stop the power of the, of the Lord in the church. This church shall grow strong. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Finally we pray that the word will come this Sunday morning. That there will be illumination and insights. I said there will be illumination and insights. That a word for every one of us will come out from the word man of God. And it will speak to our soul. Let's raise up our voice to God. There will be illumination. There will be insight. It will speak to us individually. It will bless our soul. It will heal us. It will save us. It will give us inspiration. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. I want a glorious Sunday. Amen. Amen. Our Lord God, who made the heaven and the earth, the God who seated in heaven and watched over us, we have committed a church, the nation, and our pastor into your hands. 
We we'll pray, Lord, our prayers we are sent to you and answers will come speedily in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray again specially for this nation, that your will will be done in this nation in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Let's have our seats in the presence of God. Let's tell somebody beside you, welcome to church. I think we are shy. I said, tell somebody beside you, welcome to church. We welcome everyone to service this Sunday morning. We have some very important people in our midst this morning. Those who are worshipping with us for the very first time. If you are here seated across the galleries and here in the down floor, you, and you are coming today for the first time to the Deeper Life Bible Church International Headquarters, please stand up on your feet. We want to see you. We want to welcome you. Let's welcome them specially. Thank you and God bless you. And let's tell them that you are welcome in Jesus' name. I know our converts also from the GCK are also here. If you're also a convert from the GCK, uh, the just concluded Global Crusade with Kumuyi and also other GCK programs, you can also join them. Our ushers are beside you. They will give you a visitor slip. Uh, please fill them. We love you. We welcome you. The general superintendent of the church also bids me to tell you that you are welcome. And we pray that today will not be the last day in this congregation in Jesus' name. Please, when you fill this slip, return them to the ushers uh, quickly. Also, at the end of the service, please briefly come to the uh, front of the pulpit here uh, so that our leaders will attend to you. Don't worry, the buses will wait for you. Our weekly meetings remain the same. On Sundays, we come here for devotional worship service by 7.45. Every Monday also we have the Monday Bible study. This is a time when we come to study uh, in God's Word, line upon line, precept upon precept. It's always an expository and a systemic worship uh, Bible study. And this Bible study is anchored by our General Superintendent, uh, Pastor Dr. W.F. Komui. I pray as you come, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Every Thursday we also have the Thursday Revival and Evangelism training service. This service is always lo done locally. Please ask for those who came with you and they'll tell you the district churches or location churches near you. Every Sunday evening, we also have uh, a special uh, cell fellowship for the adults and children uh, home caring fellowship for the youth. It is youth home success fellowship and for the young adults, it is YPF meetups. This service for youth and children is by 4 p.m. and for adults and the young adults is by 5 p.m. And we pray that God will bless us all in Jesus' name.
understand why he wouldn't come as the amazing way to us the other side as they left the shore the face the storm and suddenly they feared for their lives but upon the sea there's someone watch of the one that has they listened for his cry that's when they heard him call out in days and tenderly he said it is I could find them in the middle of the sea. But we need a faith and God's good grace, joy would overcome the disbelief. Now there are times in life when I face the storm, and I wonder if I ever will survive. That's when I heard them call and then the lead is said, it is high.
before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Revelation of Jesus Christ. Chapter 18. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones, and of pearls, and fine linen, and purple, and silk, and scarlet, and all fine wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. And all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone, like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians, and of pipers and trumpeters, shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Chapter 19 
And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. In a world constantly evolving with varying dimensions of illnesses, disease, with world systems and economies hanging on by a thread, cast adrift by the wind of change, Jesus, our solid anchor, remains our constant hope and stay. He has laid all your sicknesses on Christ, our healer. And he has come with full salvation and total healing for all and sundry through his servant, Pastor Dr. W.F. Queen. Heaven is loaded to pour something down upon you. I need to tell the world how glorious things are happening in Ghana. Live in Babayara Sports Stadium, Kumasi, Ghana, from the 25th to 30th, July 2024, at 1600 hours GMT daily. And the Lord is saying, whatever you choose, I give to you. Isn't that wonderful? That God doesn't predestinate you to evil. Ministers, professionals, and church workers, 
This is a clarion call to stir up a soul-saving revival in every space and environment. Come get the needed tools for timeless impact in ministry. Join us this July at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Great Hall, Kumasi, Ghana, on the 26th, 29th, and 30th at 0700 hours GMT daily. The three-in-one GCK crusade is for everyone, old and young, and with this mandate, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui is set to equip the teenagers, campus students, core members and young adults for great exploits as they arise ready to change their world on saturday 27 july 2024 at the babayara sports stadium get ready for a powerful musical experience with jeff dayor as he leads us in worship and opens the gates of heaven for an outpouring of god's blessings and favor by his tribes i am healed he healed them all he saved them all. Come, be a part of these experiences. Kumasi Ghana. Jesus is here. Make the 
We now bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.
Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our worship service today. And I pray that the word of God will take effect and do practical things, performance in your life in Jesus' name. I pray that the word will not be lost on you. The word has power. Prayer for the word, performance in the word, relying on the word solves our problems. The word will solve your problem. He sent his word and heal them is the word. It's not a pastor, it's not his prayer alone, it's not just praying and praying and fasting it's the word and when the word has root in your life your problems are over my problems are over father we thank you today and bless you for this service we give glory to you and we thank you lord because the word that made the earth the word that created everything that word you have given to us and we pray that that word will approach everything that god has not planted in our lives in jesus name that the word will come every stop 
the word will heal every sickness and the word will destroy every work of the devil in every life in jesus name lord we pray that the word will work wonders in every life in jesus mighty name we pray God bless you and God will keep on blessing you can sit down we're coming to Luke chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 22 Luke chapter 8 reading from verse 22 now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a sheep with his disciples and he said unto them let us go over somebody let us go over say it aloud let us go over unto the other side of the lake and they launched forth verse 23 it says but when they sailed he fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and then it says they were in jeopardy in verse 24 it says and they came to him and awoke him saying master master we perish then he arose and rebuilt the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was a calm in your life in your family in your place of work in your village all around you there will be a calm in verse 25 verse 25 says and you said unto them where is your faith think about that where is your faith there is a faith that grants us salvation there is another kind of faith that moves mountain there is a faith that sanctifies us purifies our heart purifying their hearts by faith there is another kind of faith a higher kind of faith that says peace be still and all the calm will come in your situation there is a faith that receives the power the anointing the unction the bulldozing power of the holy ghost there's another kind of faith that speaks to a mountain and says mountain be thou removed and that mountain from your life will go away there is a faith that makes us know that the almighty can do all things there is another kind of low level faith that only believes does not believe in god but believes in the pastor believes in the human representative of god there is a faith that comes to god directly and says god i'm saved i'm sanctified i'm filled with the holy ghost and i belong to you and i know the lord is my shepherd because of that i will not lack that kind of faith does not wait for a pastor before he believes and before he gets the miracle of God in his life the faith that knows God is mine the promises are mine the power of the Lord is mine and the breakthrough is mine that's the kind of faith God wants you to have faith in Christ faith in God you believe in God believe also in me not in peter not in paul your faith is not in man your faith is in the almighty god and when that faith operates in your life no storm 
no sickness, no mountain, no Satan, no evil power will abide in your life in Jesus' name. And then in verse 25, and he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they being afraid, one that saying to one another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and waters. Tell me. In your life, tell me. In your family, tell me. He commanded even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Performance in your life today. We're talking about overcoming the storms of life through Christ. Overcoming all the storms of your life. Can every storm in your life be removed today? Can every mountain in your life be cleared out of your life today? Overcoming the storms of life through Christ. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the hushing of the storm by his power. Hush. Be calm. Be quiet. And then it's done. Number two, the halting of the stormy. It may be a stormy sea. It may be a stormy enemy. It might be a stormy situation. It might be a stormy personality. It might be a stormy confederacy conspiring against your life, against your progress. Whatever they are, whoever they are, wherever they are, the halting of the stormy for his people. All the stormy things in your life, they are halted today. All the stormy personalities in your life, the stormy, the coming, the jack, the, the, the kind of throw the door open and they point at you and they say, are you not afraid of us? Are you not afraid of me? All those stormy people, personalities, they'll be halted in your life in Jesus' name. So that by the grace of God, as those stormy people, stormy personalities, and stormy principalities and powers, as they want to take over your life and rule your life, you will stay there, you will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. I will not fear, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies as the storm in. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely. I say surely. I say surely. I look back, I see goodness there. I look this way, I see, I see mercy there. Goodness and mercy will follow me how long all the days of your life he holds the storm and he will do it today number three the healing of the sick as our privilege we're coming to number one number one is the hushing of the storm by his power there are three things we're looking at. Number one, number one, the fervent cry that calmed their storms. Number two, his final command that conquers our storms. Number three, his faithful companionship that calms every storm. Number one, number one is the fervent cry that calmed 
severe storm. In Psalm 107, reading from verse 25, 107 verse 25, for he commanded and raises the stormy wind which lifted up the waves thereof. Look at verse 26, they mount up to the heaven they go down again to the depths their soul is melted because of trouble then in verse 27 they reel to and fro and staggered like a drunken man and are at their wits end verse 28 then they cry unto the lord they didn't cry unto david they cried unto the they didn't cry unto moses they cried unto the lord they didn't cry unto a human king they cry unto the lord in their trouble and he brings them out of their distresses and then in verse 29 he make it the storm tell me he maketh my storm. Read it that way. He maketh my storm a calm. And it says, I am God, I change not. And it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And what he did before, he's still able to do today. He maketh my storm a calm so that. The waves thereof are still. Are you there? Today it will happen to you. And the waves thereof, they are still. Then in verse 30, in verse 30, then are they glad because they be quiet. So he brings them unto their desired heaven. You will get there. He brings them. They were saved. He brings them. They relied on him. He brings them. Them, his people. Them, his saved people. Them, his peculiar people. Them, his righteous and holy people. He brings them unto their desired heaven and then in verse 31 oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men he will do it in your life we're looking at number two there number two there the final command that conquers our storm mark chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 37 and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the sheep so that it was now full verse 38 and he was in the hinder part of the sheep asleep on a pillow hold on why should Christ go to sleep at such a time? He had said, let us go over, tell me, to the other side, final. Since he had said it, he is the word personified. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the, own, the glory of the only begotten Son of God. He had spoken the word, he spake, and it was done on the basis of the word he had spoken. He didn't need to worry, he knew that that word will overcome every storm the word in your life the word in your heart the word in your mouth will overcome every storm the word had been spoken and because of that he knew he by his word has the final say the word of God will have the final say in your life 
headquarters amen. amen and so you can go to sleep the storm is speaking another language that language is weak the waves are speaking another language the greatest voice the highest voice the most powerful voice had said let us go to the other side now we can go to sleep are you there yeah. nothing will take your sleep away from you yeah. and they are waking and say unto him master carest thou not that will perish they were looking at the wrong thing they were not looking at the word that's what happens to people we hear the word we just came back from the crusade we had the word we came back from the minister's conference where we expounded the lord is my shepherd what we expounded the lord is my salvation and strength where we expounded the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof and it is not one week yet many people are looking away from that word they're looking at their storm and they're crying out master we perish where is the word the word alone will destroy every walk of the devil in your life in Jesus name when the word is present in your heart God himself is present give me a good amen you remember the story of Dagon the highest power the greatest power of those people in Ekron, unbelievers, Gentiles. They took the ark of the Lord. Eli was not there. Ophni was not there. Phinehas was not there. The priests were not there. The high priest was, were not there. They took the ark of the covenant and placed it right there in the shrine in the temple of Dagon when they woke up in the morning the presence of that ark of the covenant had blown down knocked down their day gone the presence of the word and the presence of god in you will knock down every day gone they thought it was a mistake and they set up the day gone again by the time they came back the following morning the head of Dagon was cut off the hands of Dagon cut off it remained an ugly lump and so nobody again went to that temple of Dagon anymore the presence of Christ in you behold I am with you until the edge of the world that presence of god in you will knock down will cut off will destroy will demolish every power of dagon in your life yeah. that, that, that's that's what we believe that's what the word says it says my presence shall go with you and therefore we don't need to worry about look at that storm look at that danger look at that noise look at that difficulty you are victorious in jesus name <laughs> look at verse 39 in verse 39 it says and he arose who is that the king of glory is the lord of glory is the one that is mighty in battle i am here and you satan you bring a storm and he arose it will arise for you and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea is the creator of ocean and sky and sea speaking is the creator of everything in the universe speaking to them and he said unto the sea peace be still 
the prince of peace has spoken in your life the prince of peace has spoken in your family and when the prince of peace rises up and he says peace be still there'll be a calm whatever is boiling in your brain and boiling in your mind and boiling in your family when the prince of peace rises up and he says peace be still thank god today is your day and the wind ceased and there was a great calm look at verse 40 in verse 40 and he said unto them why are you so fearful you are saved why are you so fearful you have the fullness of christ with you why are you so fearful you are sanctified and you are given the nature the divine nature of christ why are you so fearful you have the power of the holy ghost with you why are you so fearful you heard my word just now when i said let us go over to the other side why are you so fearful how is it that she have no faith they had faith for salvation they had faith for sanctification they had faith for going to heaven why is it you don't have faith over the storm your faith will increase in verse 41 and they feared exceedingly and said one to another what manner of man is this is the son of man that became a human being here that we might be raised to his level what manner of man is this is an heavenly man is a holy man is the man that came down from heaven and he came with all the power of heaven with him and that is your savior and that is your healer and that is your deliverer and that is the one that is with you is greater than lucifer is greater than the devil is greater than the old serpent and in your life you will always see the manifestation of his power in jesus name what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him any water trying to get into your sheep christ will command and the water and the wind and the waves will obey the lord in your life in my life victory will be permanent look at some look at some 33 some 33 i'm reading from verse 9 in some 33 verse 9 4 he spake and it was done he spake and it was done everything you are hearing i read from his word he spake it will be done in your life he commanded and it stood fast well looking at number three here number three is faithful companionship that calms every storm that calms every storm as he entered into the sheep storms over <laughs> have you hear your amen yeah. he is in my life i say he is in my life storms over he said he'll take you to heaven storms over he said i'll never leave you i'll never forsake you storms over he said i am with you all your tears are dried up look at that isaiah chapter 41 we're reading from verse 10 it says fear thou not for i am with thee fear thou not why 
because I am with thee. Fear thou not. Why? Because the creature of the heavens and the earth, the ones that rules from the throne of heaven, he says, fear thou not. Why shouldn't I fear God? Because I am with you. The one that is greater than Satan, greater than storm, greater than evil spirit and greater than sickness and greater than every power in the world he says i am with you and the consequence says fear thou not neither be dismayed for i am thy god i was strengthening you i was strengthening you now if you are looking in the direction of God and he says I am here the creator of the heavens and the earth and the master of the sea and the ocean and he says I will be with you why then will you fear and he says I will strengthen you no matter what comes in your way he will strengthen you and no matter the situation that you may confront as you get back home when you leave the service this morning and you are going back home you're already singing you're already rejoicing because the one who always gives the victory is going with you and he said i will strengthen you i will help you now why should you fear anymore there's no finance there's no food there's no helper and there is nothing i'm leaning on the one who fed the children of israel all those 40 years every day with manna he said i'm still here I will help you the one who brought water out of the rock he said i'll satisfy you what are you worried about i will help thee in your exam he will help you in the tests of life it will help you you don't have to do what the people of the world are doing they don't have any helper they don't have any strength they don't have any sustainer they don't have any supplier you have what they do not have he says i will help you yea i will uphold thee uh -uh, look at all this number one i am with you number two i am thy god number three i will strengthen you number five i will help you number it says now i will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness it is done i said it is done look at jeremiah chapter 15 verse 20 it says and i will not that i may not that if i'm in a good mood it's always in a good mood it's always in a happy mood it's always in a controlling mood it doesn't change and nothing jolts him and he says i will make thee unto this people a first brazen wall you see all the people making gates and making walls around their houses why they don't want any uninvited guests to come in at a time when they are sleeping when you are sleeping no uninvited guests will come to your residence because he will make thee unto this people a face breathing wall and they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee they shall fight against thee god i don't want anybody to fight against me then you don't want to see the miracle of deliverance they shall fight look at them the egyptians they're coming i will just let egypt look at the red sea before us 
Look at the mountains all around us. I look at the Egyptian army. Even Pharaoh himself is leading the army. And he said, I'll get them back. Don't worry, nobody can get your back. Yeah. And so, as they looked, they feared, they cried. That's how baby Christians always cry and fear. They might have been Christians for 30 years. Baby Christians, it's not the chronological age. It is their growth in the Lord, their growth in the world. Baby Christians always cry. Moses, why have you brought out us out onto this place? And then Moses also, because they cried, he also started crying to the Lord. Sometimes the crying of the members, if the leaders are not careful, they cry like them. The Bible says like father, like children, but people reverse that like children, like fathers. And so as the children were crying, their father also started crying, old covenant, this is new covenant. The fathers will not cry. The mothers will not cry. And God said, Moses, why are you crying unto me? What's that in your hand? The answer is in your hand. I said, the answer is in your hand. And he said, it's a rod, stretch it. And a miracle that never happened in history will happen. The Lord allowed Pharaoh and the chariots to follow so that a new miracle a spectacular miracle a great miracle something you've never read about in history so that it will happen and moses struck the rod and the sea parted in two and then the children of israel all fear now was gone and they went on and then pharaoh and the egyptian chariot said we can do that too what an Israelite can do, a Gentile can do, no. What Moses can do, Pharaoh can do, uh -uh. it doesn't happen that way. If it's for them, it's also for us. No, it doesn't happen. But the children of the chariots of Egypt, they followed after. And God allowed them to get into the middle of the sea. And then God told Moses, use that rod again, stretch it, and the water closed up on them. They fight, they will not win. You will be the winner. Look at that in verse 20, it says, they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee for i am with thee that's the secret i am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee says the lord look at verse 21 in verse 21 and i will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. In your life, amen. Yeah. In your family, amen. Yeah. Point number two is the halting of the stormy for his people. We're looking at uh, Psalm 107. And we're reading from verse 29. In verse 29, it says, He maketh the storm a calm today, so that the waves thereof are still. Peace be still. That's Tommy marriage. Peace be still. That stormy community, peace be still. Three things. Number one, the unwise disposition of self-subjection 
to storms. Number two, the unnecessary delay of solution to our storms. Number three, the undeniable deliverance of saints from storms. Look at number one. Number one is the unwise disposition of self-subjection to storms. We're looking at Jonah chapter one. And we're looking at verse three. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a sheep going to Tarshish so he paid the fear thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Verse 4, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea that the sheep was like to be broken. Now, Jonah brought the storm upon himself God said go here he went the other direction his will was opposed to the will of God his walk was contrary to the way of God his leaning disposition was different from the demand of God because of that he brought the storm against himself you know that's that's what people do they have a wise disposition God says go this way they turn they go the other way God says the way of the transgressors is hard all the same they go the way of the transgressor because of that storms come not only that the people that admit Jonah into their own sheep here is a runaway Jonah here is a prodigal Jonah here is a backsliding Jonah here is somebody that is contrary to the will and the word and the way of God and it comes into their lives a runaway backslider wants to get married to you and you are still a standing believer and God is against him is angry with the wicked every day and then comes into your life because he has money because he has connections and because he has popularity and you allow him into your life a pastor's daughter who had forsaken the way that she was trained in and has now gone into the world may not be using jewelry they might not have punched holes in her ears but she talks like the world and thinks like the world and drinks like the world and does everything like the world she's gone she's forsaking the teaching the truth that her father her mother drilled into her when she was young and now you see this standing believer and then she comes dangling this and that and you allow the backsliding Jonah Josephine to come into it that's why people have storms and they say I cannot understand I am saved and this and that but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the sheep was like to be broken and they were told in verse 11 in verse 11 they said then said they unto him 
what shall we do unto thee that the sea may become unto us for the sea wrought and was tempestuous the man Jonah was not ready to repent is fighting against the Almighty is fighting against God is fighting against his maker and he said we now know it's your presence in our sheep that has caused this this time it is your disobedience and disregard for the Almighty that has caused this and verse 12 in verse 12 and he said unto them take me up and cast me forth into the sea so shall the sea become unto you for i know that for my sake is this great tempest upon you but jonah why didn't you repent at that time uh-uh if i repent then i have to do what god said i should go and do but i'm not ready are you ready to suffer more he said once i get into the sea it's all over and god has a thousand and one ways to fight if jonah wanted to fight so god prepared a great whale and swallowed up Jonah. He got to the bottom of the sea. Then he decided it does not pay fighting against God. And inside that will, he repented. He said, I will pay the vows that I vouch unto the Lord. And the Lord commanded the will. He commands the wind. He commands the waves. He commands the waters. He commands the whale. He commands everything on the face of the earth. And as he commands them, they will work for you. Yeah. And the whale dropped Jonah, not in his town, not in Tashish, dropped Jonah at the shore of Nineveh what God says you should do why don't you do it immediately why are you fighting why are you wasting time why are you you know going to this and going to that why are you complaining do what the Lord has told you to do they'll be calm in your life they'll be calm in my life confirmed in Jesus name I'm looking at number two here number two the unnecessary delay of solution to our storms unnecessary delay in second chronicles chapter 33 second chronicles chapter 33 i'm reading from verse 9 so manasseh made judah and the inhabitants of jerusalem to err and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. Verse 10. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they were not happy. They delayed the storm, the suffering in their lives. The Lord wanted them to come out of that disobedience out of that defiance he said no you are not going to obey me. and because of that problems started and problems increased in their lives in verse 11 in verse 11 it says wherefore the lord brought upon them the captives of the host of the king of assyria which took manasseh among thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to babylon look at verse 
12 and when he was in affliction he besought the Lord is God Manasseh why did you wait when the Lord sent his messengers and his prophets unto you and now that you are bound in fetters and with thorns it says he humbled himself greatly Manasseh you could have done that yesterday you could have done that last month you could have done that last year why did you delay the solution to your problem and then we're told he humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers look at verse 13 and he prayed unto him and he entreated of him and he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem. A God is a merciful God. A God is a loving God. Even though he delayed, he suffered for his delay. But eventually he humbled himself and he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord had then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. You will know that God is God. You will not delay anymore. I will not delay anymore. My brothers and sisters, since we're still going to do it, what do